Trend Control is one of the most popular and most useful tools in the Status Enterprise Designer applications. And part of what makes it so useful are the many configuration options that are available that allow you to customize it to exactly what you need. Um, the trend control can be used to view either real-time trends or historical trends for any property in your data model. This video is going to show you some of the ways that the trend control can be used as well as some of the customization options available. I'll be using the Mimic Designer for this demonstration, but this information can also be applied to the Application Designer. In either application, you're going to find the Trend Graph Control in the Trend section of the toolbox on the right. To use it, you just drag the graph onto your design surface. Now, in order to show data on your Trend Graph, you need to add a pen to it, and you do that simply by clicking on Add Pen while you have the graph selected, and it will be added as a child. Um, you'll see when you do that, that some values have been added to the y-axis on your graph. Also up here in the document tree, you'll see that the graph pen has been added as a child to that trend graph as well. Now, if I select the pen in the document tree, I can come over here to the left side to the data binding panel and select the property that I would like to trend. Um, in this case, I'm going to be trending the temperature property on this freezer in my assets folder. Here once the graph pen and the temperature property are selected, click on apply and those two things are bound together now. There are a number of different configuration options for both the graph and for the data pens that are added to it. Options to change the way they function and the way they look. I'm going to go ahead and run this with the default values as they are just to show you a basic trend and, and give you an idea of how this actually comes to you right out of the toolbox. And what you see here is a real-time trend of that temperature property. By default, the trend graph control is set to show real-time trends of the last two minutes. Um, those are all things that are configurable. You can see by the timestamp here that it's continuously updated. Mousing over the graph is going to show you a scrub line along with a timestamp and property value associated with that particular point. You can click and drag the graph to the left and right. You can zoom in zoom out with these buttons, the plus and the minus buttons on the right side. You can see there are a number of other uh, configuration options that are available to you during runtime, things that you can actually configure while you're running the, the trend. Uh, you can change the data mode between real-time and historical. You can change the duration, uh, the duration type. You can change the frequency. You can refresh the graph. And you can toggle whether or not you want it to scroll. You can also modify some properties of your pen in runtime. You can change the name, uh, the color that it shows. You can change the thickness of the stroke line, the range mode, whether or not you want it to hold its value. You can change the minimum, maximum, and frequency of your y-axis. And you can toggle whether or not you want it to read the raw values from that property. Now these buttons at the bottom provide some additional configuration options during runtime. You can actually add additional pens from other properties in your data model. Uh, you can remove existing pens. The save button allows you to save your current configuration as a mimic of its own. We'll go ahead and save uh, this trend right here as trend graph one in my mimics folder. Save Snapshot allows you to save an image of the trend graph as it currently appears, and you can also export this data as a CSV file. Um, all of these settings at the bottom are exposed by default, but this entire section can be collapsed by clicking this gear icon at the top. Now, it's also important to know that many of the runtime settings are only available when you're running your trend graph in the Mimic Runtime or Application Runtime environments. If you're using the web gateway to view your graph in a web browser, only a subset of these options are going to be available. Now, if we look at the same Mimic in a web browser, Google Chrome in this case, you'll see that clicking on the gear icon reveal some runtime configuration options but you cannot add or remove pens or modify any of the properties of the actual pen itself during runtime in the web browser. 
One other way that trends have been used by, by many people is not on the Mimics at all, but actually built into the Data Model Browser. In the Data Model Browser, you're actually able to view trends of the properties in your data model without having to design anything at all. They're already designed and implemented for you in here. So I select Freezer 1, click on the Trends tab in the lower left panel here, and I can see all available properties. Um, in this case, there's only one property on this freezer, and it's the temperature. But if you look here, there's actually a real-time trend in the data model browser that provides the same configuration options, same runtime configuration options that we found on the Trend Control and the Mimic Designer. Um, if I float this, you'll see that I can actually open up trends for Freezer 2 as well. And Freezer 3. And this is a, a very quick and easy way see trends and does not require any sort of design on your part. Now to take a look at some of the additional configuration options that are available to you during design time, over here in the panel where we have our toolbox, click on the properties tab. Um, this will expose the properties for the selected control. Right now I've got it on the graph pen. I'll go ahead and select the trend graph from my document tree or you can also do that by actually clicking on the graph on your design surface. I'm going to expand this a little bit just so we can read some of these property names. We'll see there are many, many different properties that are configurable. Many of them are visual. I'm just changing the appearance of the trend. Some of them are functional. By clicking in the advanced checkbox up here, you'll actually expose several additional properties that can be configured for your particular needs. Uh, to get a, a more clear understanding of some of the different properties that are available here you can look at the status enterprise user guide part five the designer controls reference that details some of the functions of these various properties uh, a little bit more specifically than i'm going to be able to go over here in the video but i'll go ahead and review some of these uh, some of the the visual options you have you can change your background color your border brush or the border color uh, the border thickness you can change the butt background color for the buttons uh, and the combo boxes. Uh, the corner radius, the amount of curve that you get on these corners up here, that five pixels by default. Your data mode, which is something we saw during runtime, whether live only or real time or historical only. You can change the domain axis title. Your domain is your X axis. The y-axis is referred to as the range. You'll see down here further some options for your range axis labels, range axis title. That's referring to the y-axis. And the x-axis, again, is called the domain. Uh, you put your own custom title in there. You can change the format of the time, the way that the, the time stamps show up on the, the graph itself. Uh, you can change the frequency. Uh, for instance, this is the domain dis display width is the amount of time, the length of time that it is displayed in one visual area during runtime. Um, right now it's set to two minutes, that's the default setting. If we change that to two hours, for instance, you'll want to come down here and change your domain major frequency so that you don't end up with all your timestamps stacked on top of each other like this. So we've got it set to two hours, so let's say we want it to show every 30 minutes. Uh, you've got your foreground color is the, the color of the font that's used for the various labels. You can change the font family, the size, the weight. The graph background is the actual visual area that displays the trend itself. You could change that color as well. You've got a historical refresh rate and how frequently your historical data is refreshed if you're looking at a historical trend. Um, the start date, your historical start date. You've got uh, many, many other options here. You can decide where the legend is placed, uh, what the title is going to be. That's your title down here. Um, the title alignment. And uh, many, 
many additional options. Um, the width you can edit here numerically. Um, I usually just grab these handles and stretch it out. But <clears throat> if you have a very specific layout uh, during designing, there's uh, many, many situations in which it is a good idea to be able to, to manually enter your width and your height, which is going to be up here. These are listed in alphabetical order. Now, this, these properties are for the, the graph itself. The data pen that is actually used to display the data has an additional set of properties of its own that are configurable. Um, some of them are going to be the same. Um, one thing to be aware of is to be sure that your data pen and your graph have the same data mode set. What could happen if you have your graph set to historical only, and your graph pen set to live only you may be seeing a graph pen displayed on a chart that is labeled with different information than what is actually being displayed by the pen so that's one thing to be aware of be sure those are set to the same thing some of uh, the important ones for visual purposes your stroke that's the color of the actual line that's coming through sometimes you do shading um, if you wanted to you could have it shade so that from the actual line it would be shaded either underneath or above for different applications there may be a good use for that your range maximum uh, set to 100 here if you change that it will actually affect your range labels on the graph itself um, range major frequency uh, let's say we change that to 50 you'll see you'll only get two labels that's just determining how it's actually labeled it does affect the grid lines as well and another thing to be aware of if you have multiple pens and each one of those pens is going to have its own set of properties as well so if I was to add additional pens to this graph each one of these graph pens is going to have its own set of properties so again ensure your data modes are consistent um, you can run into some problems here if you've got a different range maximum or minimum for that matter if you set this first pen to show a range maximum of 50 let's say it will change the labels on your actual graph and then if you were to have these graph pens set to a range maximum of 100 these pens are going to draw on this graph as if 50 was 100 so when you get a measurement of let's say the value that's bound to this third graph pen was 50 because you've got the range maximum set to 100 it's going to measure right around here some around 25 because the pen itself is acting as if this chart is set to 100 while the chart has been set to 50 because the first pen was changed so that is one thing to be aware of make sure that that's consistent if you're going to be showing three different pens on the same graph but you want to be sure they all have the same range maximum otherwise you're going to get some very misleading trends and I don't want to take a lot of time changing the way that this trend actually appears or uh, so many different configuration options here are some examples of the way trends have been used on actual mimics that have been created um, there are a wide range of ways that this tool can be used to display data for a wide range of purposes. Um, of course, BSCADA is always available to answer any questions, address any concerns, and of course, if we do have designers available to actually help you create your mimics and your trends if you should need some assistance with that as well.